two most common optic nerve conditions are optic neuritis and anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So the first one, optic neuritis, is inflammation of the optic nerve. The optic nerve is like a cable that connects the eyeball to the brain. And in young people, the most common optic nerve disorder involves inflammation of the optic nerve. And this condition causes loss of vision uh, fairly quick, and then the patient comes to you immediately. And while the main determination is um, whether we should treat a patient with intravenous cortical steroid or not, another consideration is um, to get an MRI scan because optic neuritis is often associated with neurodegenerative conditions like multiple sclerosis. The other um, type of um, optic nerve condition that is rather common is anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. It's, it's a fairly a mouthful, but basically the ophthalmologist just like to say AION. Anterior means the front part of the optic nerve, and ischemia means momentary poor circulation causing optic nerve problems. And anterior ischemic optic neuropathy is basically like a small stroke right in where the optic nerve joins the eyeball, and this occurs in typically elderly patients, and the risk factors um, include high blood pressure, diabetes, so those are the most common ones. We've been doing a lot of research on both of these conditions. Um, so for optic neuritis, um, one of my colleague at Bassett Palmer, Dr. Zhang Gai, has been developing uh, gene therapy for this disorder. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that the gene therapy will prevent optic nerve damage in patients with optic neuritis. Fortunately, most patients with optic neuritis have fairly good prognosis. Their vision tends to recover. Um, for anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, at present, there is no established treatment for it. But we are also doing a lot of uh, research in this disorder as well. Retinitis pigmentosa is a hereditary retinal degenerative condition. Um, it is a condition that occurs in about 1 in 3,000 persons. So in the United States, there are probably about 100,000 people who have this condition. So this is a condition that causes progressive degeneration of the retina. And the cells on the retina are programmed genetically to degenerate. This is a hereditary condition. However, 50% of the um, people with retinitis pigmentosa they do not have a family history and they have what we call the recessive form of the disorder. So what that means for every gene we have, you know, we have two copies. One copy from father, one copy from mother, and 50% of the time, the retinitis pigmentosa is caused by um, genes that requires a, a copy from the father and a copy from the mother, and both copies cause the condition. There are other forms of retinitis pigmentosa, like dominant uh, inheritance pattern, where it goes for every generation, and sometimes retinitis pigmentosa can also be on the X chromosome. Now this condition is progressive, so typically a patient will come and they would start to have symptoms of decreased night vision, decreased peripheral vision, and then starts either in early childhood sometimes, and often in the teenage years and in their 20s. And in terms of diagnosis, I think the first important um, uh, way to assess a patient with retinitis pigmentosa is really to get a good history from the patient. To ask the patient, do you have any nine visual problems? Do you have any decreased peripheral vision? When did your problems start? And then to draw a good family tree, to ask whether there are potential members in the family that are affected or their carriers. After that, you do a clinical examination and you check the vision, of course, but the elements of the clinical features that you have with retinitis pigmentosa are as follows. One would be decreased peripheral vision. So when you do this test called a visual field test, this is a test that tests for, for peripheral vision, you have constricted visual fields. And another important feature are the visible retinal changes on the retina. And this typically includes thinning of the vessels on the retina and also some pigmentary accumulation, and those are the key features to look for. But probably the gold standard in terms of making a diagnosis of retinitis pigmentosa when you have an equivocal case in the clinic is this test, and that is called the electroretinogram. And this is a test where you can uh, shine a flash of light, and then you can use some contact lenses, and you can record the actual voltage that's produced by the retina. 
and this is really a key test and an important tool that we have.